morning and welcome to Sister in Church. My name is Sammy Ramos. I'm the lead pastor. Today is Sister in Church Online, meaning that we are not meeting at Parker this morning. Everyone is meeting right now online for Sister in Church. So whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, we're all in this experience together. And this week's online experience will be a little bit different. Um, as I said in person last week and in the video last week, we are devoting these weeks that we're meeting exclusively online. We're devoting them to times of prayer. And so throughout our time this morning, uh, we'll gather um, as a church family to pray. And so there'll be times where I'll, I'll give us a break where we where I'm leading us to pray together that those times are meant for you uh, to pray with those that you're watching the video with if you're not watching the video with anyone if you're by yourself this Sunday morning uh, you can uh, journal in those times journal those prayers I encourage you to get um, if you don't have a nice journal just a, a couple scraps of paper maybe even just on your computer just jot out your thought process this I find that whenever I'm writing it helps me organize my thoughts and so we definitely want um, to remember these times um, of prayer. And so wherever you are, whoever you're watching with, uh, know that this, this will be a little bit different. This is how our exclusively online Sundays will be. Uh, they won't follow this exact format, but we will have times of prayer throughout today and throughout each Sunday where we're meeting exclusively online. Like I said, I'm so glad that you are meeting with us. If you want to be informed and not miss out whenever we're meeting in person or whether we're meeting on, online, be sure to, to subscribe to our weekly email. Our weekly emails go out on Friday or Saturday, Saturday more times than not, um, and they, they're informative as to what we're doing that weekend, but also gives you a lot of great information on how you can get connected to Cistern Church. You can subscribe to those by hitting the connect link that's in the video description um, of this video. So hit that connect link, you'll be prompted with, prompted with an online form. We just need your name and an email address or a phone number, and we'll make sure that you're put on those on that email list. Um, that's also a great way just to connect with us so we can know uh, who you are and also let you know a little bit about uh, who we are as a church. So as I said, uh, we'll have times of prayer throughout our Sunday gathering this morning. Our band is going to lead us in a couple songs of worship. And uh, let me start off uh, this morning of prayer. Uh, with a prayer, just asking God to be with us in this time and to bless um, this gathering. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much um, for the church, this family of believers that we are uh, called to live life together with, that we are um, journeying together uh, nearer and nearer to you, God, each day. We, uh, we pray that your spirit would lead and guide us that your spirit would move in each and every one of our homes and houses, that, uh, that you would draw us close to you, that through this time together, we would not only be encouraged in our faith, but we would be strengthened for the journey. God, we love you, we praise you, and we look forward to what you will do this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, oh, we live for you. Or 
worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Yeah, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me I will. 
never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. Good morning again. As I said at the beginning of the service today, we are devoting the times that were gathered exclusively online to times of prayer, times of preparation for us as a church to regather in our community. Uh, we are regathering on the porch of Parker Elementary every other week. So next week we'll be um, there on the porch of Parker Elementary as well as online. Um, but we are preparing for a season when, when we're open to the public for our services again, where we, where we send out an invitation to come and see the goodness and greatness of God. And so as we invite the community in to worship with us, as we invite the community to come and see uh, Jesus, we want to make sure that we ourselves have what we're offering. We want to make sure that we ourselves uh, are filled with the presence of God. And so we are praying over these next few Sundays where we're exclusively online, we're praying for God to move in us so that when we gather with our community, when we engage our community, we have something to pour into them. And so uh, one of the ways that I love to pray is through using the Acts model of prayer. The Acts model of prayer isn't the only way to pray, um, but it helps get me in a good framework of, of how I should pray. I love that it starts with God. And so the Acts model is an acronym. It stands for adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. And so if we follow that model of prayer, it, it really helps. Um, it helps me, at least in my thinking of God, in my thinking of my own needs, and even just in my own thinking about myself. And so uh, we're going to go through this using... Um, using this picture of Isaiah. In Isaiah 6, 1, Isaiah is called into ministry. And as he's called into ministry, the actions uh, that he takes kind of follow this model. Not exactly, um, but they, they help paint a picture of why we can, um, we can use this as a model of prayer before God. Let me just read uh, what happens in Isaiah 6, verses 1 through 7. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook, and the voice of him who called and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, for I am lost. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my lips and said, behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away. And your sin is atoned for. 
Now, this passage begins with adoration. Verses 1 through 4 are filled with adoration language. Isaiah is filled with awe as he comes into the presence of God, as he receives this vision for God. He's just amazed at the greatness and grandness of God. And so we are going to take a break to pray. As we take this break, I want you and your family to just list the attributes of God that, that inspire awe in your life. If you're not watching with a family, if you're by yourself, I encourage you to journal this, to write it out. I find that when I write, it helps me, helps clarify my thoughts. It helps me put my thoughts in order. And so as we break, just begin listing attributes of God that inspire awe in you, that just remind you of the greatness of God. Maybe it's the more of characteristics than attributes of God, that God's graciousness towards you. Whatever it is, as you think about the God of the universe, the God who calls us his children, just begin to list the things that, that inspire adoration and awe and worship. So go ahead, take that time. Verses are going to come up on the screen. At the end of this time, I'll pray uh, to close out this section. God, we are in awe that the God, the creator of the universe, calls us his own. God, help us to um, not think too little of you. Help us to not get too comfortable or so comfortable with the presence of God that we cease to be amazed by your presence, your value, and your worth. You are so amazing. And help us to never forget that. In Jesus' name, amen. So looking back at Isaiah, after he sees the greatness of God, he comes to this realization that God is incredible. God is awesome. He's great. He's amazing. And I'm not. 
You see, in the presence of, of greatness, you can't help but to think, um, I could never do that. I'm not that thing. More so in the presence of God. As a, as a man of God, Isaiah knows that men and women, men and women, mankind is created in the image of God. We're created to reflect God's glory, to, to behold his glory and then reflect God's goodness to a watching world. And Isaiah sees God's glory and he realizes I'm not that glorious. I have fallen short of the glory of God. This is what Romans 3, 23 tells us that, that maybe 6, 23, uh, tells us that, that we all have sinned. We've all fallen short of this glory of God. And so he then confesses, woe is me for I'm a man of unclean lips. This is what the C stands for in the Acts model of prayer. So wherever you are, wherever you're doing, I want you to take a couple moments and to confess Confess your sin before God. Confess the ways that you've fallen short of God's glory, where you've failed to reflect his glory to the watching world around you. And I don't want you to pray out loud. You can just pray to yourself. Confess your sin before God. The great thing is he already knows. He's omniscient. He, he knows your sin, but he asks us to confess so, so that we can admit our need for him. So the next few moments, go ahead and pray. There's going to be slides on the screen of verses talking about confessing our sins before God. After a couple minutes, you'll see a slide that says pray now. When you see that pray now slide, um, I'm going to ask that someone in your household, go ahead and voice a prayer confession for you and your household. And then we'll go on to the next letter.
So we have much to be thankful for. The next letter in the Acts model of prayer is Thanksgiving. And the primary thing that we are thankful for is, is God's forgiveness of our sin. The very next verse after Isaiah confesses his sin talks about an angel who, who picks up a burning coal from the altar and brings it to him. And what does he do with it? Verse seven says, he touched my mouth and said, behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. I want to remind you, I want to encourage you that whatever you confessed, whatever you just prayed to God, whether it was quietly or out loud, even maybe it was something you were afraid to mention before God, whatever that was, that through Jesus, through his death on a cross, your sin has been atoned for. The price of atonement has been paid by Jesus on the cross. Your sins are removed and taken away from you. Your guilt is taken away. Your sin is atoned for when God now looks at you from heaven. This is a reminder. Every time we pray, when we confess, it's a reminder to us that God, what God sees is someone who's holy and righteous, not based on anything that we've done, but because we're clothed in Christ's righteousness. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. What more could we have to be thankful for? But there is more. And so during this next moment of prayer, thanksgiving, yes, we start with atonement and you can go ahead and say that, but I want you to, to just popcorn around the room is, is the verses pop up on the screen. Speaking of Thanksgiving, go ahead and have discussion in your home. Uh, just list the things that you are thankful for. What are the blessings that God has poured out on you and your family in this season? And again, after these verses have popped up on the screen, there'll be a slide that says, pray now, have someone in your house, go ahead and voice a prayer of Thanksgiving. And we'll move on to uh, the last letter in this Acts model.
the last letter in the Acts model of prayer is S, supplication. It's just a big fancy word to say prayer request. Um, it's it, PR doesn't fit in the end of Acts because that's not a real word. But supplication is asking God to supply your needs. And so we make our needs known before God. This is another reason we come to prayer. Sadly, for many of us, and many, I, I confess this is me during uh, many seasons in my life, I only come to God whenever I need stuff. Um, and so that's why I love the Acts model of prayer. It reminds me that there's more reason to pray other than I need something, but there's never less. And so as we pray, uh, we want to make our needs known before God because our God is our heavenly father. He loves us. He, he's not a stingy father, but every good and perfect gift comes from our heavenly father. And so we want to make our needs known before God. Scripture says that we have not because we ask not. So let's not be guilty of that. In the next few moments, let's let our requests be known before God. Uh, whatever that is, whatever you're needing right now, be sure to, to, to mention that to your heavenly father as we spend some moments in prayer. So again, verses are going to pop up on the screen as those are coming up. Make your needs known to each other there in your household. And then at the end, as it says, pray now, have another member of your household uh, pray, asking God for all of those requests you've laid out before him. And then our band is going to lead us in a time of worship uh, as we conclude our time together this morning. It's been a great morning. Uh, I look forward to uh, taking communion with you in just a few moments.
Thank you for joining us online this morning. I hope you're encouraged in your walk with God. Uh, I'm encouraged knowing that we are journeying together as a church, that we are uh, seeking revival in our own lives, in our own church, in our own community. I'm, I'm always blessed and encouraged to know that there are other brothers and sisters walking this same journey that I'm on together. And so um, as we walk this journey together, I want to... Um, I want to encourage you. I want to pray for you. If you have any needs um, that you want to share, you can make your prayer request known uh, to me by filling out the Connect card. If, if you're a member of Cistern Church or if you're new to this online experience or this community of faith, uh, you can connect with Cistern Church by clicking the Connect link that's in the video description. That'll take you to an online Connect card where um, you can let us know who you are and a way for us to contact you and we'll reach out to you and be sure you know what's happening in the life of Cistern Church uh, so that you can be a part, but also to get to know a little bit more about who we are and we can learn about you uh, through that as well. And if you're not already getting the weekly emails, fill out that connect card to make sure you know when and where we're meeting and all that good stuff. Um, you can give to the mission of Cistern Church by clicking clicking the giving link or the give link that's in this video description or the give button on our website. And then uh, lastly, just want to make sure you're aware if you didn't get the weekly email, um, we are partaking of the Lord's Supper in a Zoom meeting right after this, right after the broadcast of this morning's service. And so if you didn't get that link, you can send us a message on whatever, uh, send us a direct message on whatever platform you're watching this video on, and we'll make sure you get that link. We do uh, communion through Zoom so that we can see each other's faces. Uh, communion is meant to be taken within the community of faith, and so we don't want to just put it in a video and trust that other people are doing that somewhere. We want to actually do this together. We want to be fed um, by the body and blood of Christ as a community. Um, and to see each other's faces, to know who we are in community with. And so uh, it's been a great morning. Let me speak a benediction over us. We like to uh, receive uh, the benediction uh, with our palms facing upward. It's just a posture of receiving. And let me speak this blessing over us. Your God has loved you and called you. He is the God of the universe, the God of all creation, and he stoops to call you his child. It's not humiliating for him to do so because of his great love for us. It's his joy and his pleasure to kneel and to draw near to you. You are loved. May you go in peace. You're blessed and dismissed. Have a great week.